Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn to a couple people and just say, He is Lord. He He is. He is Lord. I'm gonna grab a is there an empty one? I hate to start to unload too many things. Thanks. He is Lord. He's a good God. Amen. Is that all right if I just kind of come down close to you? Look you look look you in the eyes there a little bit close. Thank you for being here tonight and and expecting the kingdom uh, message to come alive on the inside of every one of us, um, ready for what God wants to do in us and through us. I, I want to just share a few thoughts with you tonight that, um, it's kind of ironic that I use that word here, I want to talk to us a little bit about just how powerful our thoughts are. And I want you to know real quickly, this is not a new age message, this is not just a, um, a think positive, the glasses half full, not half empty. I, I want us to realize that from God's word, the, the significance, the importance of the thoughts that we allow to come into our minds and those thoughts, how they not only dominate our actions, but they also, it's how God wants to dominate this world through us. You see, we oftentimes ask God, we want him to do it all, and he has given delegated authority to us so we need to think different we need to think different than the world we need to think different than we did before we were born again and and some people get a little nervous when we say but we need to think god thoughts i said well that sounds that sounds kind of scary pastor if you're not thinking god thoughts then what kind of thoughts are you thinking if we're supposed to imitate our our heavenly father it tells us in what is that, Ephesians 5, 1, I think, or something like that, where we're supposed to imitate, mimic our Heavenly Father. Before you can mimic someone, you've got to have those same thoughts going through your mind. There's a lot of things I've forgotten about my dad, but the words that he said, some of the, the little things, 100 years from now, Dennis, no one will know the difference. That was his excuse for not doing what mom wanted him to get done around the house there. But those thoughts were stuck in my mind. So now my, I use them on my wife. We've been married now. Tonight is our anniversary, pre-anniversary. This would have been our rehearsal uh, meal and, uh, for our wedding. And tomorrow is our wedding anniversary. And we'll be, if, if we make it through till tomorrow, if, if we make it through till tomorrow, and I don't use any wrong illustrations tonight, we make it through. It'll be 38 years, right, Marilyn? Close enough, 38. I got a thumbs up, so 38 years. So, so well, I don't know where that all went. But anyway, so we're talking about thoughts. And I'm not just talking about having positive thoughts. I'm not, those are good. I'm talking about, let's go to great. Let's have God thoughts. Is it that important, the thoughts that we think? Does it matter what I think? How powerful are the thoughts that are, uh, uh, that are on the inside of me, inside of us, to accomplish the plan and the will of God? Because if we're not thinking God thoughts, then we'll be limited in our thoughts, we'll be easily captivated and controlled in our lives, and we'll not think impossible thoughts. I like one of Bill Johnson's quotes, we, we looked at it last week uh, in, uh, in Pathways there, that we know we have a renewed mind when the impossible starts to look logical. So many times we look at situations and we say, that's impossible. Anybody heard someone say, that's impossible for that person to get saved? It's just impossible. Hey, we're starting to put limits on God. And so we, we need to stir up on the inside. We need to go back to the, the Bible and realize that it doesn't just contain some words of God. It is the word of God. And we need to stir up God thoughts on the inside of us. And we need to make sure that the thoughts that we are allowing to stay in our mind agree with who God is and what he wants to accomplish in us and through us. So, the, so quickly tonight, if you would look at Ephesians chapter 4, I want us to to look at the Apostle Paul and some instruction that he has given to us on just how important it is on the thoughts that we allow to be in our minds. How significant it is. Because here's the tragedy, folks. We can be saved and think like an unsaved person. Now, I'm talking about Wednesday night, this side of me. Not those other folks that sit on the other side over there. I'm talking about you guys. You know, we know this, but some folks don't even know it. They, they're saved, but they're thinking like unsaved people. So if we're thinking like unsaved people, then we're acting like unsaved people. 
That doesn't mean that they're out there doing every wild sin that there is. They're just acting and living as if they have not been redeemed. And so that we see that this, 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 and the importance of our thoughts is not just so that I can have what I want in this life, but it's so heaven can fu be fulfilled on this earth. When I'm thinking God's thoughts, I'm in agreement with heaven, and then his will that's being done in heaven is revealed to me and is starting to be fulfilled here on this earth because I start to think God's thoughts and I take the limits off of him, and I stop acting like the world that is around me. Here, the Apostle Paul, we'll just start here in verse 22, and, and this is a great chapter, and I encourage you to read this whole chapter to kind of take it in the context, because he, he's revealing to, the, this is the most positive letter he wrote. It was to the Ephesians. The, the, we could say the best church example that there was. And he writes this to them in, in chapter 4, verse 22. He says, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through the deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. We need to renew our minds. We need to renew our minds. And it goes on here, verse 24, and to put on then the new life created after the likeness of of God in true righteousness and holiness. Here's what he's saying. You can be saved, people, but if you don't change your thinking, you still live like you used to instead of being able to live like God wants you to. And unfortunately, we often blame God for why things aren't happening. We need to change our thinking to be God thoughts on the inside of us, stirring up on the inside just stop and think about that last phrase there that he said, that you have been created after the likeness of God in righteousness and holiness. Somehow I think that God has a better plan for our lives than just for the rest of our life trying not to sin. Wouldn't that be, a, wouldn't that be miserable if that's all he had for us was try your best not to sin? Try to be a better Christian along the way. And, and oftentimes people, they have that old way of thinking. See, that's world way of thinking uh, is I just need to work harder. I just need to try more. I, I just need to, to get some, some new information. I just need four more steps to be able to figure this out. And the Apostle Paul said what you need to do is you need to renew your mind that we cast off our old ways and we replace them with new ways and then we can start to then be like God wants us to be, that we are now created after the likeness of God. We have read this scripture so much we can read over this and it doesn't even cause us to blink. Stop and think about it. You and I have been recreated in the likeness of Almighty God. Does that thought fit in your head? Does that thought have a Base. Does that thought have preeminence in our thinking? Does that thought control the words that are coming out of my mouth? Does that thought control what I'm meditating on during the day? This is incredible that God Almighty wanted us to have His kind of way of living here on this, His original plan, created in the likeness of God. Doesn't that sound like Genesis chapter 1? Doesn't that sound like the original thought that God had about us? The thing is, you, you know, you can flip back there to Genesis 1 and, and, and see that this isn't a new thought that God had. It wasn't a new idea that he had after we got saved. It's the original idea that God had. It was the original plan that had, God had along the way. It's the original way that he wanted his creation on this earth that is supposed to be carrying out his will to be thinking. Shout glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, along there somewhere. Huh? Turn it, go back there in Genesis chapter 1 and, and think about this is the original plan that God had for creating Adam and Eve of all of the things that God created and called them good. Everything that he had done in those first few days 
and all the amazing beauty that he had created, animals and, 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 and everything that he had done. But mankind was the only one that had the capacity to carry a thought that God had said. We're the only ones. Now, I know that animals can have a thought. If they see food, they can eat it. They see water, they can drink it. I, I mean, it, you know, if they don't like you, they can bite you. I mean, they have those kind of thoughts, but they don't carry God thoughts. You and I were created with the capacity to carry God thoughts. Let me, I shouldn't have to say it, but I'm just saying it real quickly just to make sure anybody hears this and thinks otherwise. We will never have all of the thoughts of God. But we cannot have thoughts of God, thoughts in our head that are contrary to the thoughts of God. Adam and Eve, where do you think they came up with their thoughts? They, the, God came and spent time with them in the cool of the evening, remember? And they, they listened, and God spoke to them. God said. Doesn't it say something like that in Genesis somewhere? God said. God said. A God said is a thought from God that he, he speaks out and that places that thought in us. We need to have God saids in our life. We need to have words from God that's, that's, that, that determine what we should do and how we should do it. Now, I know we have the Bible and it's a God said, but we also have the Holy Spirit. And he speaks to us too. And he speaks things to us and calls us to do stuff. I can take you to the street corner in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, when the Holy Spirit got in the car with me. My mom was driving. It was a, I think it was a, a, a 1974, I think, in Pala or something like that, mom and dad had. And I can remember the street corner that mom pulled up and stopped, and the Holy Spirit got in the car and called me to ministry. It was a God said that was planted in my mind at that moment. It was, it, was, it was God's thought that he put into my mind which changed the way I was going to live the rest of my life. Now, I had the choice to obey it or not, but it was the thought that he put on the inside of me and what I was supposed to do. And that was how he carries out his will on this earth, is for us not to learn just a, a list of do's and don'ts, but to listen to his voice on how he wants us to live life. That's the new way of living. That's the new mind. But here, Genesis chapter 1. I'm sure you're there by now. That's an easy chapter find, isn't it? Genesis 1. Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 26. Listen to this. Then God said, this is after he created everything else. Then he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That's just what James, or excuse me, what Paul was talking about there in Ephesians. After our likeness and let them have dominion. I think it's good for you. In my Bible, anyway, I kind of highlighted some of those things and underlined some of those things. God said, let us make man in our likeness. It's not so much the physical likeness. It is the ability to carry his thoughts and his will to be fulfilled through them here on this earth. It have a, a, a spirit being that was going to be eternal. Now, please don't get me, uh, don't upset and don't send me emails or anything. But, but your animals are not going to go to heaven. Your animals are not, especially your cats, they're not going to go to heaven. I'm sorry to tell you, but they are not going to make it. Uh, the Bible does not give us any idea that they have been redeemed. They're part of this fallen world, and they're here. When, a, when an animal uh, ceases to, to breathe, it, it, it ceases to exist. When you and I cease to breathe, our spirit lives on for eternity. That's part of the likeness that we have in God, that our, our, our eternal being lives that we, we have a beginning, but there is no ending of us. That we are either in the presence of God or absent from his presence for eternity. So he said, let us make man in, our, in, our, in likeness and in our image and let them have dominion. Where do you think they came up with the thought of having dominion? It was because God spoke it. He put that thought there. Folks, and I don't, we're going to run out of time real quickly, but in the New Testament... We have, again, given the name of Jesus to operate in dominion here on this earth. We need to start having God thoughts because Adam and Eve didn't go to God and say, what do you want us to do today? How do you want us to do it today? They had received a God thought, what they're supposed to do, and they were supposed to go out and operate in dominion. And part of the problem was when they got under listening to other thoughts that they should have rejected and resisted and stayed with the God thought. 
they should have operated in dominion over fish and over the birds and over the livestock. And it goes on and on here, verse 28, and God blessed them. I want you to know God has blessed you. He has blessed you. There's no question about it. The question is, do I think like God has said about my life? Do I think thoughts that I am blessed of the Lord? Or do I wait to see something that confirms it before I believe it? Do I wait until I feel like God has blessed me? Do I wait to feel? What's the biggest blessing that we could say that God has given us in his life? It is his presence in our lives. It is his presence that we carry in our lives. If I'm looking for natural things to be the determining factor of whether I'm blessed or not, the adversary can get involved in that. But when I walk around saying, I'm blessed to the Lord, not because of whether my bills are paid or not, but because I have the presence of God in my life and no one can take that from me. No one can steal that from me. No one can take that presence away from me in my life. That's why it was so bad in the Old Testament when one of the, 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 the people there gave up their birthright for some natural food along the way. Because you are born of Almighty God. You are created with purpose and dominion. And we got to start thinking like this. We're blessed of the Lord. Just say it, I'm blessed. I'll say it with a smile this time. So I'm blessed. Pastor, I don't... It, let me ask you real quickly. What thoughts came into your mind when you said that? Was it thoughts of doubt? Thoughts of, I'm trying to figure out why I'm blessed? Or was it the God thought? You're blessed because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Is it God thoughts because we sang songs like, if the Lord is with us, who can be against us? Are those just words coming out of our mouth with no meaning behind them? Or have we thought about those to the point that we're singing those songs as declarations and dominion on this earth? and making it known that God's will is going to come to pass in this work. We are blessed of the Lord. Listen, it goes on. God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. This is the original thoughts God was putting in Adam and Eve. Wouldn't it be incredible if we could wipe all of our brains, and we could just start off with this original word of God, where God speaks to us, and say, this is what I want you to do. I want you to know that you're blessed. I want you to know that you're going to be fruitful. Be fruitful. God didn't say, go do your best. He said, be. It just is who you are. You just be it. You be fruitful. What, fruitful here doesn't, in this situation, isn't speaking of, of having more children. In this situation, is being fruitful is being successful. God's saying, you're blessed. I'm with you. If you go out there and think my thoughts, I'm going to be able to bless whatever you put your hand to. And it's not so that you are able to consume. Adam and Eve weren't trying to keep up with the Joneses. There were no Joneses. But he was just saying that I will bless what you do. I want my will done on this earth. And in heaven is a best blessed place. And it is a fruitful place. A successful place. And it goes on and says, and you will multiply. You will be able to have more children. Having big families was not for a workforce. It was so that his dominion could spread out over the earth. And in our day and age, folks, I want you to know, God's not saying that you got to have big families, but he's saying this, he wants to have a big family. We should be multiplying today. We should be multiplying. There should be people being born into the kingdom of God on a, on a regular basis right here in our community. Not because we're so smart, it's because we're having God thoughts. God says that we can have dominion in our community. God says that we can have authority in our community. Not over people, but over obstacles and demonic forces that would try to stop it from happening. What kind of thoughts are we having? Pastor, when you moved over to the north side, you know that's kind of a hard side. Hard for who? For God? Is there a hard place for God? But those are the thoughts, aren't they? Huh? What do we learn when we go to, too many times you go to church growth, find location, location, location. If you can get your church somewhere where everybody will see it, people will start to go there. That's worldly thinking compared to God thinking. 
So we see here that, that he's putting these thoughts on the inside of us. I want to stir those thoughts up on the inside of you. I want you to think that you are Adam or you are Eve, that you were there, and God's putting these things on the inside of you, and, and you just start to understand this is what God said, so there's no question about it. There's no doubting whether he's speaking to me, or, and there's no doubt of could this come to pass because God's just putting this thought in you so that you know this is what will be done. And subdue it and have dominion. That's military terms there. You've got to be ready for conflict. You've got to be ready for, to, to protect. You've got to be ready to, to, to advance the kingdom of God. And you've got to be ready to, to take care of that. You have that authority to do it. We should not be surprised when the enemy attacks us. We should just be ready to overcome when the enemy hits us. And so these things start to stir. We start to see the original intent. And if we had time, we'd read on down here. And God said, after he had put, created mankind and put these thoughts on the inside of Adam and Eve, he said, this is very good. This is very good because now my word, my thoughts have been now put into my recreated image in mankind so that heaven's will can be done on earth. Doesn't it say something about that in the New Testament? Is This is the, the way, if we're not thinking heaven's thoughts, we're not going to have heaven's results here on this earth. But if we're thinking earthly thoughts, we'll have earthly results here on this earth. So it's time for us to get to, to, to stop for a few moments. And, and I know that, that most of you could preach this sermon for me. But are we doing it? I'm just encouraged again. I'm stirred up again that I need to control some of these thoughts in my mind. They're not bad thoughts. They're just not God thoughts. They're not bad thoughts. They're just not thoughts that, that, that are thought in heaven and need to be stirred up on the inside of us. We often speak about this God said, but we overlook it sometimes as this is what God revealed through creation. God said, let there be. And we just read over and God said, and God said, and God said. This is God transforming his thoughts into us because of what he wants to do. Are you having God thoughts? Is the thoughts of God stirring on the inside of you? Real quickly, uh, um, originally, not originally, but, but years and years ago, you remember that they used to think that the world was flat. It was the, it was the, 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 the belief of, of man that the world was flat. And it was, you were afraid to go too far. Because if you went too far, you knew what would happen. You'd fall off the edge. And they didn't know what happened when you fall off the edge. And so they were limited. They were fearful. And that thought was perpetuated down until someone challenged that thought. Now, how many of you know the world's not flat? Is, any, is everyone in the room pretty much, pretty, do we have to convince you of that one tonight? Everyone knows that the world's not flat. Now, we understand it's, a, it's actually, you know, oval, but we'll say round. We know that the world's round and that changed everything. We're not afraid of falling off anymore, the edge. We're not afraid. So we go forward. Folks, so many times we as Christians, we got flat world thinking. We're limited. We're afraid. The what ifs. I, I haven't gone that far before. Other people have said that you can't do that. Instead of going to the Lord, instead of spending time in His presence, instead of saying, Holy Spirit, bring the revealed knowledge of the Word alive to me. Give me God thoughts. Not so that I can go around and say, Yay, the Lord say unto you, and yay, the Lord say unto you, and yay. Uh, yay, yay, you know, hippie hooray. Uh, but, but, but God thoughts of what does the Lord want to accomplish through your life? I'm not opposed to, God, uh, to, to prophecy. I'm not opposed to God saying things. But folks, I think what needs to happen is all of us to stir up our minds a little bit more with the holy word of God of what we can and should be doing on this earth. Not just trying to, to control sin in our life. And not just trying to be a better Christian in our life, but we're starting to see, I need to, be, I, need to be, I need to be subduing, I need to be dominating, I need to be multiplying, I need to be fruitful in my life because that's what God said when he blessed us. And, what, and, and, and Jesus, when he came and the way he lived, he didn't live with a flat world mentality. He came and did things that had never been done before. He said things like, what's harder for God to, to say, like, sins be forgiven or rise, take up your bed and walk? He's saying there's nothing difficult with God. 
He goes in and, and, and brings someone like Saul onto him and get, he gets saved and, and miraculously transformed. And then Paul's writing scriptures like, it, with God all things are possible. That, that's, that's not flat world thinking any longer. So many times we have limited what God wants to accomplish on this earth because of our thinking. It's not possible. It's never happened before. What if it doesn't work? What if I get out there and I fall off the edge? We need to renew our minds with the word of God. And I tell you what, when you start thinking God thoughts, sin thoughts don't find any traction in your life any longer. When we start thinking God thoughts, our flesh and its control starts to drop off. Jesus was not just the, the, the only example Jesus for us. Jesus was the example for all of us to follow after. Are we thinking like Jesus? Because Jesus showed us how to think like Adam before the fall. Without that sin consciousness, I don't know if God would do that for me. I don't know if God could use someone like me. I mean, I mean, just naturally speaking, I was, I was, I'm not saying I'm a good speaker now, but man, school, I was not, not public speaking, speech class was, um, it was an act of mercy for that teacher and for, for me to get through that class. I, I, I remember speech class, we could only write down so many words that would help you on your speech to remind you of what you're supposed to say. So I thought I would get around it. I had that many words and then I, I wrote symbols and pictures pages of them to help me remember what I was going to try to say because I was so afraid to get up in front of a class. Didn't know what I would say. Didn't know what, I, now, you know, now I can't hardly shut up. But, uh, but the, the difference is when I started to see that God, if he called me to do this, then he could equip me to do it. If God called me, then he can use me. I'm going to trust in his ability, not in my eloquence along the way. I'm going to be confident in his presence and he's going to help me to do what he's called me to do. How are you applying these things to your life? Phil Johnson said this and I thought it was a great quote. He says, I can't afford to have thoughts in my head about me that God doesn't have in his. Thoughts like, I'm unworthy, I'm unusable, I'm no good, I'm worthless. Do you think God has those kind of thoughts about you? No. He, as you look through the scripture, he's, he calls you holy. He calls you righteous. He calls you his chosen one. He calls you the church, the bride of Christ. He, he, it, you look, he calls you his temple. He calls you his body. Are those the thoughts that we think about ourselves? We've, in the past, we've been given the flat world philosophy of Think humble thoughts about yourself. You're no good. You're just a worm. Be thankful you got saved. It amazes us all. But, but, the, but God's way of thinking in us is, I loved you so much, I was going to do whatever it took to get you born. I want you, I want to have a close relationship with you because I want my will to be fulfilled through your life here on this earth. I want to demonstrate my greatness through your life. Thinking those thoughts transforms the way we live. What does God, let's say it this way, how did God think about Adam and Eve before the fall? What was his thoughts towards them? They were wonderful. They were good thoughts. They were good thoughts. How did God, Adam and Eve think about God? They thought good thoughts. They thought thoughts of how God was going to use them. They never questioned whether they could do what God had told them to do. How do you, has anybody experienced the new math? The, um, Lord help me. And I about had a nervous breakdown trying to help my grandson on the, the math there the other day. Adam and Eve, we'll say Adam for sure, named all of the animals. I'm having a problem learning core math. Adam was able to name all the animals. That's some thought. That's some thoughts that were there. We think, well, I can't do that because I'm getting old. I'm losing my memory. Is that, is that a God thought? Huh? Can you show me that one in Scripture where God said after you turn 
old, that would be, what, 95, 98, something like that, you start to lose your thoughts. Start to lose your mind. He didn't say that. That's flat world thinking. I don't see Noah, man, I used to know how to put this thing together when I started the ark, but now i got all these pieces, and I don't know how it's supposed to finish up. Oh, incredible. And we've seen how God, was, God gave him a, a task, and he was able to fulfill. What has God called you to do? And start to have God thoughts and his ability to use you to do it. Start to think like, like God wants to use us. What thoughts did God have about Jesus while he was here on this earth? Our example that we're supposed to live after. They were good thoughts, weren't they? What kind of thoughts then transformed Jesus? Because he said, I only do that which I see and hear my father do. The thoughts that he had transformed the way he ministered here on this earth. He didn't have to stop when he came up to somebody that was ill and say, I wonder if God wants to do something in this person's life. Flat world thinking said, I bet this person sinned or their parents sinned so that that's why this bad thing has happened to them. Flat world thinking said that, that, you know, we can't cast out this demon. Jesus never had a problem. His thoughts were different. Are our thoughts limited? Flat world thinking? Or are our thoughts limitless? With God, all things are possible. How are you thinking? Those, those old ways of thinking slip in so easily. So that's why it's so important for us. Last scripture, we'll just have to close here tonight. Last scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 5 and 10. You know these scriptures. I'm not asking if you know them. I'm saying we got to be doing them better. Here's where Adam and Eve messed up. They didn't control their thoughts. When we spend time in God's presence, we hear his voice and we have God thoughts. Pastor, I don't know if I've ever heard God's voice or not. I'm sure you have. It doesn't always come as a, you know, booming, yea, the Lord say unto you. It's just a whisper. Just a whisper that he speaks to you. A God thought that he puts into you. Maybe you're reading the Bible and there's just a verse that just, just jumps out of that page at you. It's a God thought. He's speaking to you. But, and we need, to, we, need to, we need to capture that thought. We need to hold on to those thoughts. We need to make those thoughts stick in our head. I, I can't tell you how many times, in, in, and I've changed it because I've got paper and pencil, but even by my bed and there at the house, so that there's times at night where I'll just be laying there and just in the presence of the Lord, just worshiping Him and just thanking Him, not asking for much, and a thought will come to me. I thought, man, that's good, Dennis. Not Dennis thought it, but God put that thought in it. And if Dennis doesn't write it down, Dennis has the potential to forget that thought. I value that thought enough that I capture it. Because I'm going to need that thought. God just doesn't throw out random thoughts. You ever been around someone who's just got all kinds of trivia, you know, can tell you how long the bridge is and how deep some water is? Who cares? God doesn't just throw out random thoughts. He puts thoughts in you that you're going to need. That's why he calls them seeds. Because it's what's going to be needed later on as a harvest. So we've got to capture those thoughts and hold on to them. And then make sure if there's any contrary thought to that, what are we supposed to do to it? Eject it. Delete it. Get rid of it. Can't hold them both together. Here, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, he says, For the weapons of our warfare, here we are in dominion again, subduing. The weapons of our warfare are, are not of the carnal, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Folks, we are talking about taking dominion in areas. Not physically, not, you know, moving across the river into Missouri and we're going to take more territory for Jesus in Missouri. He's, what he's talking about here is in the spiritual realm, predominantly in our minds. And he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. So there are strongholds that need to be dealt with. Verse 5. We destroy arguments in every lofty opinion that rises against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We must control our thoughts because our thoughts will control our actions. And for God's will to be accomplished on this earth, he's going to do it through his church. We go back to the original thought. We go back to what Paul taught. 
and we see that he wants us today to still be blessed. He still wants us to be fruitful. He still wants us to multiply. He still wants us to be exercising uh, dominion and to subdue the adversary that would come against us. And so we have to have these God thoughts stirring on the inside of us at all times, holding on to them, rejecting anything that would be against it, holding on to the original thought because the adversary still comes and what does he do? Did God really say? Was that really a thought? The enemy wants to get us to doubt the original source of the thought. He wants us to, maybe that's just, maybe I just thought that. If he can get us to doubt the source of the thought, then he has an inroad into replacing it with his thought. Did God really say the original source? And then he gets us to try to doubt the original intent of the thought. I've told some, hey, do this. And I go check out, did you get it done? Oh, I thought you meant to do it differently or do it another time. No, I meant do it now. What's the original intent when God said this? The church has symbolized and um, used uh, different things along the way where, well, Jesus didn't really mean that. He didn't mean that he was supposed to, that we're supposed to still do it. That was just the gifts of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit was just to get the church started, but he didn't mean for us today. I, go home, read Mark 16. There's a thought for you. Cast out devils. Speak with new tongues. Lay hands on the sick. See them recover. Jesus went with them and confirmed the word with signs and wonders following. That's some thoughts that are God thoughts in our mind. Amen? Huh? In, amen? In the back or anywhere? I mean, those are God thought thoughts. Are we thinking those thoughts? Or have we allowed the worldly thoughts to consume our minds so much that we don't have time for God's thoughts? Have we allowed the cares, the worries, and the concerns? Have we have allowed the pressures of this life and the busyness of it to so consume our thoughts? There's, I'll just be honest with you. Every service, there's a sweet spot for me. This is my sweet spot. It's right in the moment where I've, I've gotten to the point where I've forgotten about everything that's going on. I'm not concerned about it at all. And I'm not close enough to preaching that I have to start to try to dial in what do I need to say. And it's just a moment there. I'm just in the presence of the Lord. I'm just worshiping God with his family. I don't care about anything else that's going on. And it's just a, a moment. And, and even my mind is refreshed at that time. It's not just spiritual. My mind is refreshed. I'm not trying to God, give me something. Give me, give me a word. Give me a word. Give me a word. It's just in his presence. And it's when I'm in his presence and I'm just in that, that place that he usually speaks a word to me. But it's usually more of a word to me that he wants me to, me to think about, not just a word that I need to preach about. Oftentimes we don't want to get to that sweet spot because we don't want God to speak to us those personal words. Hey, take that thought and throw it away and replace it with this thought. The world's not flat. It's, there's potential in you. It's what I've created you to be and to do. Are you thinking God thoughts? Have you allowed the enemy to tell you it really doesn't matter? Or did you get the revelation like Bill Johnson? I can't afford have thoughts in my head about me that God doesn't have in his. Holy Spirit, thank you that you bring all things back to our remembrance that you've taught us. God thoughts. Lord, we repent for not honoring your word and holding on to it. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would refresh us and repeat those thoughts to us so that we we, we see the value of them and so that we start to desire to fulfill them. Lord, we want our minds to be renewed so that we can start to live more like you. We want our minds to be renewed with God thoughts so that we can, can be involved 
in what you've called us to participate in in these last days. We want this church, Father God, and this ministry to be fruitful, to multiply, to be able to subdue and to be able to have dominion over the work of the adversary, not just so that we can have a big church, but so that the kingdom is furthered and the will of God is accomplished on this earth. So, Lord, we just make space in our lives and our thoughts for you to speak to us so that we can start to be more like you, see the potential. That's why it's called revelation. It's a revealed thought from God in our lives of what we can do in you. And so, Lord, with that, we thank you that in Jesus' name, we do resist sickness and disease. In Jesus' name, we do resist the kingdom of darkness and his attacks and attempts over our lives, our families, this ministry. In Jesus' name, we thank you that the power of the Holy Spirit flows through this place, and it's easy for people to receive the things of the Spirit and to speak with new tongues and and to experience heaven here on this earth. We thank God thoughts. Your presence is here, so all things are possible. We're not just going to have church services. We're not just going to go through routines. But we are expecting the Holy Spirit to accomplish and fulfill your will and your plan here. We don't have to see some special manifestation to know that you are present. And we expect transformation and change inwardly in our thought life. And then we will see it in the way the power of God will move in this place. There will be tongues. There will be interpretation. There will be word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, miracles, signs, and wonders. And it will all be for the glory of God. And it will all be a demonstration of the dominion, the power, the authority. It's in your church for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.